They, these guys are ready. These guys are ready. We're almost ready. Everything's almost ready. We're, we're ready. See? It all came together in the end. So I would like to introduce Hashed and Zcow. They're going to come up here and talk about Bitcoin, Monero swaps. Uh, I'm going to pass this off to the two of them. Do you guys want two mics? Or are you are you okay with this one? Oh, just you. Oh, you're going to you're going <laughs> to they're going to do atomic swaps on stage. <laughs> they're going to they're going to they're going to do a an act they're they're going to hmm. I was going to say something cool, but then I, I butchered it. So I'm just going to pass off this mic to them and let them take it from here. Hello, everybody. So uh, two years ago, uh, we were here sitting between the Monero and Bitcoin. Uh, what? Uh, we were sitting between the Monero and, and Bitcoin tables and we I was talking to Polto and Polto suggested, why don't you try to work on a BTC Monero atomic swap and we were and we started we didn't think it was possible but well after two years we have something more concrete <laughs> so and we would like to talk about it so uh, <clears throat> a lot of people got into Bitcoin because they thought it was like uh, an anonymous currency so like for example this tweet from 2011 from WikiLeaks WikiLeaks now accepts anonymous Bitcoin donations on this address. As we know, Bitcoin is based on outputs and you can trace. So this is a Bitcoin transaction. These are two outputs. These are the UTXOs. So, and <clears throat> so here it get, this output gets spent by, on this transaction and produces output that gets spent on this transaction and produces output. So you can link these three outputs together so you can trace all of everything. So here's another example, uh, which is a little bit more interesting because <clears throat> here you take one output, you split in two outputs, and then you merge them back into one output, which means like it's the same, it's the same person. <clears throat> uh, so like this address here is this address here, and these are all the addresses that send money to it and it, and the size uh, encodes the the volume that pass through that those addresses and what is it so you see these three big addresses these are probably uh, businesses like exchanges and of course you c can de-anonymize people if you can trace it back to such a, a big hub so the bitcoins cannot be easy, easily tracked back to you, which was the, what was in WikiLeaks website. Well, not true at all. So, how do you how do you avoid traceability uh, on Bitcoin? You can't. But if you have a way to trustless swap Bitcoin to Monero, for example, then you can. <laughs> so. Uh, and it's very important that uh, this has to be trustless because uh, otherwise uh, you need identities and you need then it's like uh, then you're not anonymous anymore. So the basic idea of cro uh, cross-chain atomic swaps is that like Bob has, uh, uh, for example here, Bob has Bitcoin, Alice has Monero, and you either want this transaction to go through, like meaning uh, Alice in the end ends up with Bitcoin, starts with Monero and ends up with Bitcoin, and Bob starts with Bitcoin and ends up with Monero. It, both have to go through or none have to go through. Uh, this is the atomicity of the atomic swap. So why Bitcoin Monero? So Bitcoin is the real thing, but it's traceable. Monero is untraceable. So uh, Bitcoin has a, a large market cap, people use it, a little bit, <laughs> uh, and additionally, just like uh, as a side note, is like many users are unable to move their coins. So, if 10% of Satoshi coins would uh, uh, go into Monero, like the market cap doubles already. So, so again, like atomic swaps are trustless. There is no trusted party involved, so anonymous trades can happen. So, we are here presenting today because we started this project here. And 
and uh, there are some things that we didn't work out. For example, we need a we need a, a zero knowledge proof that we don't know how to do, and we would love to have help uh, from the community. Uh, additionally, a few a few libraries got uh, developed uh, uh, on this work, and and it would be great if. Uh, com uh, to get community uh, participation and community contribution to these libraries. Uh, with this, I will pass to Hesht, and he's going to go through the protocol carefully. So right, left, and, and this is one. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, everyone. So um, I will uh, cover a bit in detail the protocol, but before starting, uh, let's, um, let's talk about uh, the scenario. So here we have Alice that has some Monero and she won Bitcoin. Bob has Bitcoin and won Moneros. Uh, they, agree, they already agree on the price and the quantity and they want to trade, but they don't trust each other. And in the protocol, we assume that uh, one can be malicious. So first, uh, I need a bit of uh, notation and a little math, and I promise it's very little, but it's the boring part, but the fun part will come just uh, in a few seconds. So uh, first, we denote a Bitcoin private key as a BY, uh, and a BI, and I can be either A or B for Alice and Bob. And uh, we use capital B for the Bitcoin public key for Alice and for Bob. For the Monero keys, uh, we denote the private keys with small k and small kv and ks for the view, the private view key and the private spend keys. And uh, we use capital K uh, again for view and spend keys uh, for the public keys. So we can uh, define an account with a pair of two public keys, and we can uh, we can parse an account with the knowledge of the private the private uh, view key, and we can spend from the account only if we have the knowledge of the private spend key. And for for the protocol, we defined um, partial keys or shares. And we denote a share with um, a share for the spend key with a, a small uh, small a and small b for Alice and Bob. And we define the full um, the full spend private key uh, with just an addition uh, modulo l. That is a parameter uh, for the Edward uh, 25519 curve. And last slide on the boring part, uh, notation. When we uh, say, sorry, when we say uh, KSA capital A, it's, we, we mean that uh, KSA is known by Alice. It's for the next graph. Uh, we use this uh, small a, uh, big capital A and capital B for uh, who knows what secret. So now, now we can go through the protocol, and here is the fun part. Here, we assume that first, because they won a trade, they both completed the initialization and locking uh, phases. Uh, I will go in detail about these two phases later, but uh, now all the parameters are initialized and the funds are locked. and we, s we can start the swap. So what's happening is um, Bob, Oop. sorry, um, Bob knows some secrets and uh, he will share the secrets to Alice. So we, m we move one step, sorry, yeah. So we move one step, we, we, we do the, tran the transition in this uh, state diagram. We do one transition, we, we do the start, and the knowledge of S is shared with Alice. And now Alice will have all the prerequisites to um, do the buy action. So by doing the buy action, the Bitcoin that have been locked are transferred to Alice, 
on her uh, Bitcoin wallet. And as a side effect of this transaction, this Bitcoin transaction, we on purpose, we leak some information. And in that case is the knowledge KSA that was known by Alice was leaked during this transaction. And now KSA is known by Bob. And because Bob knows KSA and KSB, he can reconstruct the full KS key, private key. So uh, we have the locked Monero. Uh, we have the, the knowledge of, Bob has the knowledge of uh, the full uh, spend key. And he can get the Monero. So basically, we just leak one part of the private key depending on the, 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 the path um, in the protocol. So um, that was a quick um, overview of uh, the successful uh, path of the protocol. Um, I said before that the protocol is uh, decoupled in three main phases. First, it's the initialization. In the initialization, we will generate all the parameters that need to be specific and common to each party. And um, we will also, in these phases, generate the zero knowledge proof. I will talk about the proofs uh, a bit later. And when this is uh, done, we can create the different transactions that will lock the found. And when the founds are locked, we can start the swap. So uh, after the lock is done, we are in this state, and we can proceed to the swap. So in reality, the swap phase is the smallest and, and simplest phase. So first, uh, the protocol initialization. We generate um, the, the view and, and the spent partial private keys. Each, each generate these private keys and derive the, the associated partial public key. Each generate a pair of uh, uh, Bitcoin keys. They compute a hash of the private spent shares. And Bob compute a secret and also the hash of this secret. And then comes the zero knowledge proof that uh, I will talk about it later. And they exchange the, the private view key because they want to have the, the view of what's going on uh, on, on the Monero uh, blockchain. They uh, share the spent public keys. So they can, with this information, they can have the, the locking address for the Monero part. They both exchange their uh, Bitcoin public keys. Um, and they share, the, their, they, they share their hashes and the zero knowledge proofs. And after sharing this information, uh, each verify the zero knowledge of the other party. And if everything uh, passes the validation, uh, we are good to go for the lock phase. So the locking phase uh, for the Bitcoin side requires two transactions. If you are familiar with uh, payment channel construction, it's it's a like kind of standard uh, construction. Um, and here we have a first trans Bitcoin transaction that lock Bob's Bitcoin and have a at least one UTXO that has this uh, script. And the script will hello um, for the buy, uh, the buy action, or um, allow the refund if the swap is canceled. And uh, if the refund is, um, is uh, choose, this transaction will again allow two different paths. The first is the refund is completed, so each uh, gets their money back, minus the fees on each uh, chain. And the third, the, 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 the fourth path, uh, no, sorry, the, the third path is, is created as an incentive mechanism to force this one. If, um, 
in, in that case, Alice will get the Bitcoin without traveling any information. Here we can see that HA, so the hash of one of the secrets, is leaked during the transaction because we will need to reveal the, the secret that uh, will uh, correspond to the HA. Here we will leak the secrets from Bob, but here we don't leak. We just wait and we can get the Bitcoin out. So we did that because we can have a deadlock if nobody acts here. I will uh, talk about it a bit more later. So uh, that was the two Bitcoin transaction. Now we have one transaction for the Monero part where we move uh, Alice Monero into the address that corresponds to these two private keys. And uh, uh, this address is again generated in the initialization phase. So uh, here we can see how Alice can uh, buy the, the Bitcoin. She can sign with the, her key. She needs the secret S that is generated from Bob. Uh, and she leaked the secret. Here we can see how Bob can uh, refund and then cancel the swap. We see that uh, he has to sign and he has to reveal his secret part. And here we, we see that um, Alice can claim the refund without revealing anything, uh, but after some time lock, so if Bob doesn't react, he will lose. So this forces Bob to react when the refund is triggered. And for the swap, uh, here it's basically the same as the graphic we, we had uh, before. So we see the, the S secret that Alice needs to, to know to trigger the buy. Uh, she needs her own uh, private secret. She needs the Bitcoin transaction. Uh, and uh, this will consume and transfer the, the Bob's Bitcoin uh, if she do the, the buy by revealing to Bob uh, this information. So what happened if Bob never shared this S parameter? After some time in the first tr transaction here, after some time, this refund can be triggered. So if Bob never share uh, the secret to Alice, and uh, we are still in this state, the refund can be triggered. And with the refund, Bob should directly um, spend the refund or Alice will be able to claim it. Um, now what if Alice doesn't buy? Bob shared the secret, so Alice should be able to do the buy, but she, uh, she doesn't do anything. Then Bob also, after the first time lock, can do the refund and directly spend the refund to get uh, the Bitcoin back. And by doing that, he will relieve, reveal the secret, and then Alice can uh, take her Monero back. And now if Bob doesn't refund, again, we have the claim from Alice. Uh, that is the, the incentive to Bob to refund. Um, and uh, that's, that's the, the full protocol. Now, uh, the um, non-limitation or open problems we, we have still is uh, the zero-knowledge proof part. So what we need to prove is that the secret we will relieve, reveal on chain is really related to the hash and to the public key we send in the initialization phase. So it, we can show it like that. After the initialization, what's, what is exchanged is the, the point on the curve that is um, used to get the Monero address. The two points are added to, to get the, the, fully, uh, uh, the, the full address. And the hash that is used 
in the Bitcoin transaction. And it works because we, 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 we want a relation between those two. We, we, we want a secret that will end up to the hash and that will end up to the, to the, the point. So this is the zero knowledge proof that we need. Uh, thank you, uh, everyone, for uh, attending the talk. Um, we have, we, we, we are like really open to have any feedback or uh, community contribution um, on this uh, paper or the libraries. And um, if you want to reach us, we also have a, a Petrinet that represents the whole protocol. And um, uh, you can play with it. Uh, we will also release um, a small a small video where uh, the Petrinet is a, a bit more explained. Uh, here we put just like a partial view of the system with a graph. So yeah, feel free to reach us and, and uh, chat about it. I don't know if we have time for questions. Yeah, we have time for questions, so any questions? Uh, hi, thanks. Mm. Uh, is it possible to see, like, once the transaction is done, that uh, on the Bitcoin side I participate? Is it possible to see that I participated in this cross-chain atomic swap? So, what you can analyze on the Bitcoin chain is you can you can see. This script, if the swap goes through directly, you can see this script uh, with uh, this uh, transaction that will reveal the information. So that will be for sure in clear. And uh, you can match, match everything that has this pattern. Um, this will reveal uh, an information about the Monero part, but this information is uh, not enough to get anything to, to, to do any any relation to the Monero part. So f here you can maybe assume that uh, the person is not the same anymore in, in the Bitcoin part. Uh, but that's the only information you should be able to get. Uh, so uh, we so these pattern nets like they really model the whole protocol execution. So if you because it's a bit uh, we could not make it uh, simple enough to be able to display it here. But we if you want to visit any possible path of the protocol, come to us and we're gonna play the pattern net and you're gonna be very clear like uh, every potential uh, protocol execution that can happen. Uh, so uh, we did this with yesterday with the help of Statebox and we thank them for that. Okay, thank you.